You're watching From the Soapbox to the Stage, and I'm your host, Bill Corbett. We've all seen passionate speakers on stage and on television. My guest says that you must use that passion to set yourself apart from other speakers. But just how do you do that? Frank DeRaffoli is the founder and president of Entrepreneurial Excellence Worldwide Incorporated, a personal and professional development firm. He's the co-author of the book Business, Networking, and Sex, Not What You Think which became the number one best-selling book on Amazon in nine different categories and number two in overall book sales, only behind The Hunger Games. He is an internationally acclaimed motivational speaker, trainer, and CEO performance coach and incorporated his first business at the age of 18 while attending college at Syracuse University. Welcome to the show, Frank. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. You were on the first segment, and we were talking about what you do, and you're, you're a big-time networking guy, yeah. and so you get a lot of clients that uh, pay you to come speak about networking because it is a huge thing. I know in my own business how important it is. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to the chamber breakfast, and then yeah. tomorrow afternoon, you'll find me at a casual networking group I've never been to. It, it, that's how people find out about you, and I sure. think it's so important. Uh, you know, even in my book, I wrote about the fact that you got to get out there, and that's connections. It's not all about sitting behind your desk in your office, and, and you really got to get out and meet people. But for this uh, this segment, you and I spoke earlier, and I said, give me one thing that we can give to viewers that is important about being or or becoming successful as a speaker. And you talked about passion. One thing that you, you said to me was, uh, people will drive miles to see a man set himself on fire. Uh, this is an old saying, and how does that relate to passion? <laughs> I think it's, if, if someone has, if you have the energy, the passion, and people know that, people just thrive off of that. And we see that all the time. We see people who just have, you know, they don't have to be high energy, crazy type people. Like I know I get very kind of high energy with stuff. I know hard for you to believe, but, um, <laughs> but it's one of those things that if people have a real passion about what they do and that, that kind of oozes out of them, people want to be around them. People want to be around positive energy. We have too much negativity in our lives. The news is filled with it. So when we have positive people around, people want that. And if you have that type of message, no matter what you're talking about, if you have that positive energy, people want to be around you. People want to listen to you and see what, see what you have to say. So in, in, my, in my book, uh, Soapbox to the Stage, one of the things I talked about is a lot of people work in their jobs and they have no passion. They don't feel passionate about their job. Yep. They dislike their job. Uh, they feel like they've joined the what I call the walking dead. Yep. You know, they live for the weekend, leave, leave for the vacation and it's all over again. But I'm telling, I tell people, fine, you, you gotta work that job to put the bread on the table, right. but what are you passionate about Go find that. Absolutely. And if even if it's part time, if it's volunteering, what what sets you on fire, like you said, and go do that. And what I think I've found is that when people do that, even part time, it actually allows them to bring the passion into their Yep. their primary job that they require for, for paying the mortgage. Wouldn't you agree? It gives them a whole different outlook on life because now all of a sudden they're pursuing something they, they love to do. I'll give you a quick story. There's a gentleman who was in an advertising agency. He, he worked in an ad agency in New York City. Hated the job, made good money, didn't like it. I said to him, what do you want? He's 40-something years old. What do you want to do? I want to play professional baseball. It's always what I wanted to do. I said, do that. And he's like, do that. He's, what are you talking about? I'm 40 years old. I said, I'm not saying be a professional baseball player. Work in professional baseball. He goes, how? I don't know anybody. I can't do it. I said, don't tell me how. I said, so go get yourself, put yourself in play. Get in that place. What we did, we got him a job at Yankee Stadium selling hot dogs. <laughs> right? No, what? So he goes there and he's like, what? I said, just trust me. He goes there, he starts to do the hot dogs. Now, you can imagine he's there a week or two and his manager pulls him aside and goes, what are you doing here? Right? Because he's not, he's a, a really, I mean, high level guy. And he said, well, I want to work professional baseball. He goes, you shouldn't be selling hot dogs. That guy walks him into the office and says, look, this guy's out here, he shouldn't be selling hot dogs, he wanna work in baseball, you guys need to talk. Brought him into the office, long story short, today he works in professional baseball, he works for one of the major, major league teams doing marketing for them. Because he went and got, started selling hot dogs first, he put himself in the network, in the place where people were, where he, and he got noticed, because it was like, you shouldn't be here, right? Like, this is not, what, and the guy noticed that and said, let me put, introduce you to somebody. So he put himself in play and went there. And if you have the passion, you do whatever you do. So he took a step down to take a step up and say, look, if you're gonna do it, dive in and make sure it's gonna happen. Don't give me excuses it can't happen. Let's just make it happen. Now that, he's doing it. That, that's a great story. That's a great story because we have uh, so many people who are unhappy in their jobs or they're unemployed and they only know one thing. You know, they yep. got the, the horse blinders on. And, uh, but, but if they really dig deep and find out 
what do I, what, what would I do if time were no issue? Right. Well, if money were no issue, what would you do then? And it changes their perception and they say, you know, I would, I would uh, you know, work with cats and dogs because I love them. Fine, then go volunteer. That's right. Go spend time and it's, it's really, you, you give a really important message. Go do what you feel passionate about and from that, magical things can occur. That's right. Stop making excuses. Make it happen. So start it part time. Whatever. The, if you're working at one thing now, so you're working your 40 or 50 hours a week at what you're doing now, working for somebody else, and you want to go and you want to start doing something else. So go start doing that. If that's one hour a night or two hours a night or get up early in the morning. You know, what about these people who are athletes on TV, amateur athletes, and they work other jobs, but all of a sudden they're in the Olympics doing these other things. When do you think they work out? They're working 40, 50 hours. They get up at four or five in the morning, train for two hours in the morning, another two or three hours at night. They're putting in five, six hours a day. Why? Because it's what they want to do. I'm not saying go put in an extra five or six hours a day, but do something. Start along the process, and all of a sudden that'll, that'll fuel you. and It'll make you work hard at your business, and you'll start to, you have to transition, right? Because you have responsibilities, financial responsibilities. You can't drop one and go to the other. You've got to transition in doing that. And that's what we did with, with my own friend Paul. We had him transition from one to, I said, don't leave a job where you're making good money when you have a family to support, but let's see how we can transition you. That's what he started to do. It's the same type of thing. Like you're saying, find it, go find the passion, start going after it. Things will happen when you put yourself in the right place. Author John Acuff wrote the book Quitter. Mm -hmm. And I love that book Quitter because he talks about go find what you love to do now while you're still able to pay the bills. Yep. And, and that way you don't disrupt your, your life and you don't, you, you don't upset your significant other, you know, because uh, they're planning on, on getting that. So it's really good message and we really hope that, uh, that viewers will take that Fine, you have to do your day job because you've got to pay the bills, but what can you do on the side, especially if it means volunteering right. for organizations that truly need that. Listen, I really appreciate you coming out, Frank, and, and, and telling your story and giving your message because I think people watching this, whether they watch it end up watching it on the web or, or on uh, public access, they're going to get inspired to say, I can do that too. What do Absolutely. I love, whether it's fixing bicycles or working down at the uh, you know, donation center, something, and bring that fire into the rest of your life. Cool. Thanks so much, Frank. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Uh, if you're not passionate about what you speak about, why would anyone take the time or spend the money to listen to you? You have to feel it when you inspire others, and they have to feel it too. Find that fire in you and share it with the world. I hope you'll join me for future episodes of the show as I set out to tap into the knowledge of professional speakers who are willing to share their secrets for success on the stage. As Dale Carnegie once said, make the most of today, get interested in something, shake yourself awake, and let the winds of enthusiasm sweep through you with gusto. I'm Bill Corbett, and I'll see you the next time on From the Soapbox to the Stage.